Well, thank you for joining us as we continue our thoughts uh, in the Word of God. It's been a few weeks since we have been with you. We apologize for that uh, delay. Sometimes life gets in the way of things. And uh, to be honest, we've just not been able to record for several weeks. But now we're, uh, we're happy to be able to get back into that. <clears throat> this evening, we're going to be looking at... Um, a passage from the 20th chapter of the book of Joshua. As we continue to make our way through the Old Testament, we find in the book of Joshua now at this point uh, that Israel has entered the promised land. The land has been divided. They are in the process of settling the land of Canaan. And now we come to the 20th chapter of Joshua. I'm going to begin by reading the first nine verses of this chapter and hopefully we'll see something here that will be of great benefit to us, uh, although um, what he talks about here certainly has nothing to do with us. We find a principle here that I believe will bring us a lot of comfort in our lives. The Bible begins this chapter by saying, Then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, Designate the cities of refuge of which I spoke to you through Moses that the manslayer who kills any person unintentionally without premeditation may flee there, and they shall become your refuge from the avenger of blood. He shall flee to one of these cities and shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city and state his case in the hearing of the elders of that city. They shall take him into the city to them and give him a place so that he may dwell among them. Now if the avenger of blood pursues him, then they shall not deliver the manslayer into his hand because he struck his neighbor without premeditation and did not hate him beforehand. He shall dwell in that city until he stands before the congregation for judgment, until the death of the one who is high priest in those days. Then the manslayer shall return to his own city, to his own house, to the city from which he fled. And so throughout the rest of that uh, that chapter at least through verse 9 now those cities are designated well let's think about what's going on here in chapter 20 the settlement of the land of Canaan is it's almost complete there are some uh, important things yet to be done but not too many uh, in chapter 21 the Levites are going to be given 48 cities that uh, where they can dwell in chapter 22 uh, two and a half tribes are going to return to their land on the other side of the Jordan River, and uh, probably next week we'll have some things to say about that. When you come to Joshua chapter 23 and 24, uh, then this tremendous leader, as an old man, addresses Israel for the last time, and there are some very inspiring and important words that challenge us in uh, those two chapters. Here in chapter 20, something very important needed to be done. That goes all the way back to Numbers chapter 35, where that chapter begins in a very similar way that Joshua, uh, to Joshua chapter 20. The Lord spoke to Moses in the plain of Moab by the Jordan opposite Jericho, saying, and then he goes on to give instruction. The first part of that instruction in Numbers 35 was about providing cities for the Levites, uh, but then... Immediately after that, he gives instructions about what are known as the cities of refuge. I want you to notice something in common with these two chapters. In chapter 20 of Joshua and in chapter 35 of the book of Numbers, the text begins by saying, Then the Lord spoke. In the first case, in Numbers 35, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, in the second case, he spoke to Joshua, saying, and of course, Joshua was the successor to Moses as uh, head of the nation of Israel. Anytime you see those words in God's Old Testament law, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, or then the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, that lets you know that serious divine instruction is about to be given. It's God's way of saying, this is the way things are going to be done. Well, among the things that he said to Moses in Numbers chapter 35 is that there are to be six cities of refuge, three on one side of the Jordan River, three on the other side of the Jordan River, and that was very important to the nation of Israel. So think with me for just a moment about the cities of refuge. What was the purpose of the cities of refuge? Well, 
they were a very important part of Israel's legal system. They applied specifically uh, in cases of capital murder. Go back to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 13 of the Ten Commandments. A very short, brief, and yet pointed commandment was no murder. We know that commandment as thou shalt not kill or you shall not commit murder, uh, Exodus 20 and verse 13. It was a prohibition of the crime of murder, the premeditated taking of someone else's life. Murder, by the way, was a capital offense. If you look at Exodus chapter 21 and verse 12, uh, the one who killed somebody in cold blood, a premeditated murder, was punished by forfeiting their own life. That seems to go all the way back to something that God said immediately after the flood in Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6 when Noah and his family came out, came out of the ark. God said, Whosoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. And the reason for that is that human beings are made in the image of God. So murder was a capital offense. Well, contrary to the opinion of some people, God's law was eminently fair. Some people look at God's Old Testament law, and actually what they do is cherry pick a statement here and a statement there and say, well, man, this can't be the same God that you read about in the New Testament who talks about love and uh, of whose love we're reminded in so many ways. And they look at certain statements without considering context and without considering the overall breadth of the Old Testament. The cities of refuge are really a testament to the fairness and the justice of God. God understood and certainly understands and has always understood that not every case of killing is a case of murder. There are cases where somebody quite unfortunately, accidentally, unintentionally takes the life of someone else. The cities of refuge were God's way of saying those cases are not to be considered the same as premeditated murder. They are considered to be considered and treated differently. Number, or rather Joshua chapter 20 and verse 3 says that they were for the manslayer who kills any person unintentionally without premeditated murder, uh, without premeditation. Killing or taking human life is a very serious thing, and none of us wants to do that. There are people who in cold blood go out and murder other people. God has no patience for that. And people like that in the Bible were punished severely. On the other hand, as tragic as it may be, as unfortunate as it may be, there are cases where somebody takes another person's life quite unintentionally. There is no premeditation involved. God says you are to give that person a place of refuge. And so the one who had done that would flee to a city of refuge. Joshua chapter 20 and verse 4 says that that city was to take him in. That city was to give him a place so that he could dwell among them. Numbers chapter 35, verse 24 and 25 stipulated that that person was to be allowed to have a trial. If, by the way, they were uh, found guilty of premeditated murder, they would be punished accordingly. If they were found not to be guilty of premeditated murder, then they were allowed to live in the city of refuge until the death of the current high priest, at which point they could go back to their hometown and live out the rest of their lives in peace and safety. It was God's way of saying our law needs to be fair. We need to take all things into consideration, all things into account. And so for the one who has tragically, yet unfortunately and unintentionally taken someone else's life, God says there is a place of refuge for you. Now, on a different level, maybe on a spiritual level, if you will, I want you to understand that we have a place of refuge in God. You might look at Psalm 46, and it's a passage that speaks of that beautiful refuge we have in our Heavenly Father. It begins this way, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. What does that mean to us? Well, he goes on to say, therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, 
And though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride, no matter what happens in this world around us, we have a refuge, a place of strength in God. Therefore, we do not fear. When you look at verses 4 through 7, the Bible talks about what he is able to do. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy dwelling places of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She will not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations made an uproar. The kingdoms tottered. He raised his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There's that refuge that we have in him. All oh, the, the heathens may rage and the earth may tremble. But you know what? When God utters his voice, the earth melted. That's how powerful he is compared to all the enemies that may uh, raise their strong arms against us. So as you continue in Psalm 46, you have this exhortation, Come, behold the works of the Lord who has wrought desolation in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariots with fire. God is able to overcome all enemies. There is nothing in his presence. And so you have then, in conclusion in this psalm, a tremendous uh, statement of strength. Cease striving and know that I am God. Some translations say, be still and know that I am God. Friends, do you need that place of refuge? Is your heart troubled? Is your soul um, not experiencing any rest at all? God says, be still and know that I am God. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And you're able to take this comfort with you from that knowledge. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. God gave to ancient Israel six cities that were places of refuge. In his strong arm, we find our place of refuge and rest. Bow with me as we close in prayer. Father, thank you for today and every blessing you've given us. Thank you that though the earth around us may be in turmoil, you give us a place of refuge, a place of safety. Help us to take great comfort in that and to stand strong in the knowledge that you are on our side, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining us. Come back again the next time. Until then, may God richly bless you all.